I am Bracchus Rex. I am the Source King. You shall not seal the veil, and I shall not be struck down. I call on the God King. Come claim what is yours. How? What? You are unleashed! Friedemann cackles in delight at this turn of events. His unbridled glee slithers into your veins and throttles your heart. You left the leashing wand next to me, you stupid maggot. So accustomed had you become to me pretending to be your slave. Kill him! Do shut up, you tedious buffoon. And don't look so surprised. As if I would allow that bone bag Dallas to enslave me. me. You should have listened to Tarquin, you worm-ridden wench. Nobody enslaves Bracchus Rex. I am Bracchus Rex. I am the Source King. This is not the time for talk. Kill him, now! Too late, you moldering, blight-stained pigs. Grant me power, my ally. God King, I call on you. The God King hears my call. He sends a companion worthy of my power. Come to your father. Come to the Source King. <laughs>
Prepare yourself.
Lucian struggles to rise, but the weight of his own pain leaves him to gravity's mercy. My time is done. But you, your source burns so bright I'm all but blinded by it. Be wise and true, Godwoken. I am no hero, but wisdom and truth. These are values I always believed in. Dallas groans in pain. I have failed. The future of all that is rests on your shoulders. I'm wrong. About power, I mean. I was always kidding myself that I could only help my people if I were free. Lead them by example, you know. Thing is, I can never be free. So I must choose the dwarven people's liberty in exchange for my own. I know you'll have my back when I return to them, just like I've got yours. Beast bows in return. There's no denying the glint in his eye. Whatever the future holds, he is game for it. Yes, is it? I can hardly believe it. She casts her gaze around the crypt in awe. After everything we've been through, after everything we've seen, here we are, here I am. And now that I see godhood before me, I know what I have to do. Chief, you need to ascend. There's no one I would trust with this responsibility but you. I know you'll do what needs to be done, what ought to be done. And I know you'll do it with style. Ha! <laughs> They'll never know what hit them. Now go on, shoo. You've got business to attend to. Listen, this is it. Again. And I want you to know I'm not putting up a fight, not against you. My revels are now ended. Yours are about to begin. I've had my vengeance, my life and my liberty. You helped me win them back. And then, 
When you told me you loved me, all of me awoke. All I want now is for this to end, to be by your side when we wage the final battle. And long, long after. I know you do, and I love you too. Now kiss me. You kiss each other passionately, ready to face the darkest dark. You think back on your journey here, on all that you have seen and done. You think of the Magisters, and the sorcerers they hunted, and of the good and the evil on both sides. You think of how the Eternals came as Voidwoken to reclaim their stolen world. You look at the source around you. The power is immense. Divinity at your fingertips. You think of what you could do with such power. The rights you'd wrong, the wars you'd win. You marvel at your journey and how it has changed you. You think of those you left behind, and of those you met along the way, who stood by you or against you. It's time to choose your fate, and the fate of all you hold dear. What shall it be? Shall you be divine? After all that you have been through, and all that you have done, all that you have become, the Aetiran lies in front of you. Divinity is yours to take. Or to sacrifice. What you do next decides your own fate and the future of the world. What shall you do with divinity? So it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the god world. A new divine rose, a true heir to the Seven, more powerful than ever, and united Rivalon in its battle against the Void. All across the realm, he was loved, worshipped, and adored. Humans, lizards, elves, and dwarves all rallied to his banner. The Great Allegiance stood once more, but the war continued. From the depths of the Void, the God King still sought to return. As for me, I was freed of the God King's terrible tyranny. I avoided an eternity of pain and suffering. Now I fight for the other side. Now, I fight for the Divine.
Malady stands tall and proud, sunlight sparkling off her mask. From here, she looks almost angelic. Well, here we are again. You, me, and the ship I've saved from ruin for your personal benefit. I'd say you owe me, but why state the obvious? Get an eyeful, your holiness. I expect it's the last we'll see of each other for some time. She turns to you, arms crossed, and grins. Look at you. Magnificent. <sighs> Don't I know it. Let's hope it pays off. She fingers the mask, covering her face. For a moment, it seems as though she's about to remove it. But instead, she places a hand on your shoulder. We've come a long way together. I did my best by you all the way. I sacrificed much. But I'd give even more to see you become exactly what you've become. Soon, I'd like to have a little chat about something you can do for me. But... I believe that can wait. Relax. Enjoy. I certainly plan to do the same. Oh, I don't know. A round and about. Treat myself to some mead, a lover or 300. I'd say we've earned it. And when the time comes, I'll come find you. Your holiness. escaped an abominable prison and confronted the king of all gods, only in turn to confront divinity itself. A rather poetic arc, don't you think? Not that your story is finished, of course. Your divinity shines upon all who walk Rivalon. And there will be those that escape to the shadows. You must be ready to face them, whenever they might emerge. As a matter of fact, yes. Source makes for an excellent ally in matters of a demonic nature. Not only can Void seep through the Veil, but the beasts of Nemesis might similarly slip out of their own plane. Whether you are clever enough of a divine to keep Damien's disciples confined to Nemesis, I can't say. But I think we'll know soon enough. And... I suggest you be ready. Now that I am clear of mind and free of... intruders, I'm wondering if it isn't time to share my learnings with the less enlightened. And to that end, I have a few ideas worth considering. Once I've come to a conclusion, I promise you'll be the first to know. Until we meet again, Prince. Beast brushes detritus from his beard, sand, skin, and whatever else might have accumulated there. He takes a deep breath when he sees you. I know it's the same old sea breeze I've always smelled, but it's, it's different now. I don't know how to explain. Maybe you do, oh divine one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Beast looks to the ground, then to you, and again, the ground, then you, and then once more, until he gets the point, and a most hearty laugh shakes the whole of his body. You almost had me there, lad. <laughs> That's what I should be asking you. I'll find ways to excite myself. Always do. First I go back to the kingdom, see the queen. And there's a lot to do there. Damage that needs undone. Dwarves have lived in fear for far too long on the outside. And the inside. Something tells me it's all going to be okay. He winks and begins to sing. Here, here the wild beast just sails on the ocean, he's docked in the bay and coming your way. Off on the yawn, you hear the commotion, he's docked in the bay and coming your way. Your cupboard can't hide you, nor can your birth, his daggers don't care about the gold that you're worth. He'll bury your bones neath a mountain of earth, he's docked in the bay and coming your way. He pauses, then continues to hum all the while working his whiskers. I've never been fond of what the Divine stands for, but I must say, it's rather exciting to say I've been up close and personal with one. Reform my ways? <laughs> How adorable! No, I'm afraid I cannot escape who I am and what I've done. Her eyes flick down to your mouth. She smiles coyly, then slinks forward to kiss you. Almira pouts in disappointment, but it quickly morphs into a devilish grin. Oh, no matter. We'll always have our first kiss. I haven't been quite able to put it out of my mind. Just as I'm sure you won't be able to put me out of your mind. Hmm. Who knows? A nice cottage someplace quiet for Mahali and I. A roaring fire and a feather bed. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. But a girl needs some fun, doesn't she? Why, you! Look who it is! Our brand new Lord and Saviour! She curtsies low and looks up at you with a grin. So, what's your first order of business? End world hunger? Instigate world peace? Send all spiders back to hell where they belong? Well, yeah. I'm not the next god. Someone made that abundantly clear. She winks and pokes you in the ribs. So? Come on, don't keep me in suspense. What are you going to do with your almighty power? I hope protecting the realm suits you too. This place will keep you on your toes, but we're counting on you. As for me, the poor, lowly mortal, I've got business of my own to attend to. Ding, ding, ding! My loot calluses are all but worn off. I'm a disgrace! So, Chief, I guess this is it, right? Don't speak too soon. You're a god now, after all. Soon enough, your brain will be full of all the fates of all the people in all the realm. Let me know if you see any falling boulders coming my way, though. Or goiters or something. As she turns from you, the whites of her eyes darken, the veins in her face go grey, and a wicked smile curls her mouth. Suddenly, it's gone again. She winks, and you're left wondering whether you saw anything at all. See you around. Well, 
if it isn't the new divine gracing me with his presence. <laughs> How honored I am. That is the question, isn't it? How does one top the greatest feat of necromancy ever conceived? I might have the answer to that. Tell me, have you ever heard of Gustafjan? No, of course you wouldn't. It's a written language, unreadable to most, but myself, naturally. It comes from a mysterious race from another world, beings that feed on minds. I intend to seek them out. This Gustafjan seems to guard portals to their realm. And once I've uncovered one, well, why settle for being the greatest mind in just one world when there's another for the taking? Tarquin's smirk wilts into a glow. I didn't come all this way to show deference. Some friendly advice. All who rise are capable of falling. Gods, the divine, anyone. Remember where you came from. The last thing this world needs is more tyrants. Well, well. Look who finally graced us with their presence. I suppose some thanks are in order. What? No, no, you should be thanking me. I just saved the world from the great Acorn. You're welcome. By the way, honestly, Quirkus, some creatures have no sense of perspective. A huge grin slowly spreads across the squirrel's small face. Of course, had you not stopped this god king and his lackeys, there would have been very little left for me to say. So? The cat moves forward twisting around your legs and filling the air with the sound of dry, dusty purring. Ah, quackers! Please, have a little decorum. Quirkus arches his back, almost dislodging Solora, who just smiles. This battle is won, my friend, but we still have a war to fight. We've undone the great Acorn. But the Knights of Dre are still out there. They summoned the Great Acorn once. They will be able to summon it again. We have to destroy their order, once and for all. That is the future Quirkus and I have ahead of us. We no longer need a shield. But we are very happy to have a friend. The squirrel tenses for half a moment before relaxing into your fingers. Ah! Oh, my, Quirkus, you never told me it felt this good. Well, that was certainly an experience. Of course, this has all been something of an experience, eh? I don't suppose any of us did. I never thought I would be proud to have befriended a giant. But there is no one I... Oh, Quirkus! There is no one that we would rather have walked this world with. I do not know what comes next for you, but you will always have a friend in the forest. Come, Quirkus. We must... Oh, I think you have something in your eye, my friend. The cat curls up and snuggles into his squirrel friend, who quietly sits and sniffs on the deck. Amazing I'm still here. That we're still here. That Lucian... Well, that relationship always was complicated, wasn't it? You're so much like him. My instincts tell me to kneel to the new divine. I've done so before, after all. But... I can't drive myself to do it again. Gareth beams. 
For the first time, he is his own man. Yet his enthusiasm is not a man's, but a child's. A friend, yes. That I know how to be. For a moment, his mind wanders to memories of friends and enemies, of malady and magisters, of demons and divinity. He is then in the present once more and smiles at you. Friends, I find a way to fit. I wasn't just content to lurk in Lucian's shadow. I was his shadow. Now I stand in the sun as my own man. I just don't know who that man is. And so I find out. My goal is to have a goal, if that makes sense at all. And if it doesn't, well, that's all I've got. Darling, there you are. Come, let me take a look at you. I've never known a god before they became divine. I was curious if it would have changed you. She gives you a long, assessing look, but makes no immediate comment. Hmm. Sounds sort of... promising. Isn't it... odd, though, being a god? She chuckles. I'm sorry, it's just... there's something funny in it, isn't there? A prisoner one moment, a god the next. You must feel the difference. Don't you feel it? Maybe you should give it a bit of time. I imagine it takes almighty power a little while to settle in. I'll... Serve my people as best I can. I am theirs now, and they are mine. But I won't forget what we shared. I'll never forget that. We love each other after all. A kiss, and oh, how sweet she tastes. Let's do good. You by yours, me by mine. Together, though off to part. I suppose it's time for me to explore a new form of eternity. It gives me almost as much pleasure to speak to you as it does to be whole again. I will always be an ally to those that carry source, to those whose blood is of the heroes of old, and so as always, I am at the ready. Consider me to be a gift from Malady. My wood was splintered, but my spirit intact. It was a great feat, but given her skill, not a surprising one. I feel better than new. You look out to the endless beyond. The sun's light plays upon the waves, just as it always did. The sails flutter in the wind, just as they always will. And yet, something is different. You are different. And with a start, you realize where you must go next. You speak the command to the Lady Vengeance, and another chapter begins. War raged on. Arx remained the center of power as the races united behind the Divine. But the Voidwoken attacks continued as they did elsewhere. Arx would see many more long years of war. The ancient Empire of Lizards became one of the pillars of the new Divine Alliance. The Houses of War and of Shadows were particularly useful in the fight against the God King. The Empire used the war to expand its territory. Justinia returns to her throne. Under her rule, the Dwarven Kingdom fought for the Divine, and her loyalty was unquestionable. 
Many fine and courageous dwarves did their people great honor in battle and in death. With Lucian gone, the elves reluctantly rejoined the Divine Alliance. Their place in the War on the Void would entirely depend on the integrity of the new Divine. And on the integrity of the elven Godwoken who did not ascend. And here and there, across the world, what was left of the Black Ring fought on. The island of Fort Joy remained a sorcerer's paradise, a place of exile for those whose sorcery threatened to bring in the void. For their well-being, its residents depended entirely on the benevolence of the new divine. Reaper's coast struggled on. The farms and the fisheries fought to feed the people against the void-woken blight. The black pits took fire. The oil there burns still. Driftwood teetered on the edge of starvation until the night the void-woken came from the sea. All were killed. This did, however, put an end to the famine. The Nameless Isle had vanished. Although only open water remained, by instinct ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Sir Gareth thanked the surviving seekers for their service and gave them their freedom. Disillusioned with ongoing war, he set out alone to find a new purpose. He would never stop seeking. Young Han grew up a warrior and became one of the Alliance's greatest generals. But even he could not win the war. Almira and Mihaili settled in an abandoned homestead. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favor. Outsiders were often suspicious, but no local would speak against her. With a new divine at the helm, Malady had a powerful ally, but she was in no hurry to call in her favor. After all, it might be the last thing she ever did. Having performed the greatest act of necromancy in history, Tarquin found the new world unchallenging. He became obsessed with rumors of another plane of existence. One day he vanished and was never seen again. Ahu the wizard served the new divine with honor, wisdom, and an at times unnerving feline elegance. The undead priestess Gratiana remained in her sanctuary, happy to wait for the war to pass. She was troubled only by the silence of her goddess. Jehan the demon hunter never stopped hunting for demons. Sahela sought to strengthen the Elven Alliance with the new divine. Her powers of sight proved useful in the ongoing war against the Void, but she could never be sure that the new divine trusted her. Tova, her mother, was Sahela's most trusted warrior. The Beast of the Sea returned to the Dwarven Kingdom to lead the Dwarves in the fight against the Void. After a series of public blunders, Marcus eschewed political power and returned to the sea. The Beast and the Lady Vengeance sail on. As the new mother, Sibyl found a great forest and founded a new elven homeland. Elves flocked to her and worshipped her as a goddess. Sabeel swore never to kill again, 
but once in a while she'd look at her needle and smile. Losa returned to her music and enjoyed a storied career as the Divine's premier musician. Dark moods would still overtake her, and she would spend long hours walking in the wilds. She always returned with a new song. And then there was you. And you, the Red Prince, the Lizard Divine. What did you do with your power? What kind of divine were you as the world battled on? Did you show mercy or strength? Did you sacrifice others as Lucian had done? Did you regret becoming divine? Did you wish you'd surrendered the power that runs through your veins and sealed the veil? Only you know the truth. Only you know if you atone for your sins.
to me, the night is dark. Come to me, the night is long. Sing for me, I'll sing along. Sing for me, oh, sing for me. Sing for me.